Hello, my name is Yilun Hua. I'm presenting our work that proposes a framework to evaluate how well multimodal LLMs can do in context adaptation to communicate efficiently. Cognitive science has shown that humans communicate more efficiently over time through interactions. Think of a conversation between a customer and a sales assistant. When they initially talk about certain items, they tend to use more elaborate referring expressions to disambiguate them. But as the conversation continues, they will use shorter referring expressions while still understanding each other. They both have adapted to form what's known as ad hoc linguistic convention. Such adaptations can be more rigorously studied in controlled environments, and researchers have used reference schemes for this purpose. A simple reference scheme setup involves a speaker and a listener. The speaker needs to communicate a target image to the listener using a message, and the listener makes a selection based on the message. To study adaptations over time, researchers build on top of this structure and use repeated reference games. In this case, a single exchange is called a trial. A complete interaction has many trials. These trials are organized into several repetitions. An image would repeatedly appear as the target once in every repetition. The system will give feedback to both parties, informing the selection and its correctness after each trial. As the players interact, their messages become more and more concise, eventually reaching a very short phrase which they use as the convention to refer to the image. This phenomenon has been observed quantitatively, where the messages consistently get shorter over time. In this process, the messages converge and stabilize, meaning that messages for an image will have less variation from one repetition to another, and eventually, the humans would repeatedly use the short conventionalized message. The lexical convergence and stability are important for efficient communication because otherwise, the listener needs extra effort to reason about unseen referring expressions. Another property of this process is that the listener would understand their partner better, achieving higher game accuracy over time. We want to evaluate if multimodal LLMs can adapt like humans in these situations. Such adaptations will save text generation cost and efforts of the human interlocutor while reducing misunderstandings. Because MLLMs are usually used as conversational agents with just in-context learning, they should be evaluated under the same condition where no weight updates are made. These models have performed well in many tasks under this condition, showing impressive abilities consistent with human behavior. They can do so because they have learned from large amounts of human data, Given that adaptation for efficiency is everywhere in human conversational corpora, we expect LLMs to show this ability too. To study if this is actually the case, we propose ICA, a fully automated evaluation framework. It tests how well MLLMs can use more efficient language or understand a partner who is adopting more efficient language over time. Both are abilities humans show and would expect their interlocutors to have. When ICA is running, the system keeps track of the conversation history R. At every trial, it evaluates the model as either the listener or the speaker. It uses a preprocessing function F to create a prompt based on the conversation history so far. It queries the model and then computes the feedback. Importantly, the function F is easily customizable to support different reference game variants that provide different insights. I will explain them in greater detail later. Another key component of ICA is the simulated interlocutor, which allows us to evaluate generic conversational models without letting them interact with humans. To evaluate a model as the listener, we use a deterministic speaker, which for each image, it uses a predetermined sequence of messages from an existing human-human interaction dataset. These messages show a realistic trajectory of shortening. In this case, the existing dataset provides both the images and their corresponding messages. To evaluate a model as the speaker, we use GPT-4 as the listener because our experiments show that GPT-4 has high performance similar to humans when acting as the listener. We first evaluate the model as the speaker. To this end, we design different interaction variants by changing the instruction for the model. Here is an example model input from a snapshot of the interaction. You can see the most basic instruction that just says, generate a message to tell the listener which image is the target. The model input also includes conversation history so far and the current trial's target. And here, the model is expected to generate a message to refer to the target. 
under this standard speaker setup, all models fail to improve communication efficiency over time. Some models even show increased verbosity, though their messages indeed guide the listener to make relatively accurate selections. We also notice that the model's messages are less consistent across repetitions compared with humans. They would often add words or replace words from their earlier messages the next time an image is referred to. We propose a metric called word novelty rate to measure this issue. It's a modified word error rate which only counts insertions and substitutions, not deletions, because word deletions naturally happen in humans' convention formation and have less impact on the listener's perception. We measure the word novelty rate between corresponding messages from consecutive repetitions, showing how consistent these messages are. In human-human interactions, word novelty rates decreases and becomes very low. The model speakers, however, have much higher word novelty rates. IDFix and LAVA are the only exceptions. They mainly repeat their initial messages throughout the interaction. This is, of course, undesirable too, because their messages do not shorten. We then try to elicit the adaptation behavior with increasingly explicit prompts. We started with instructions based on the Gaijin quantity maxim, telling the model to provide as much information as necessary, but not more information than needed. But this did not work well. We then tried more explicit instructions, specifying that the model should gradually condense the messages. This did seem to help at first glance. Specifically, GPT, Cloud, and Gemini all show length reduction. However, their word novelty rates are much greater than humans. This is surprising because when humans' messages shorten, they are also convergent and stabilizing. This deviation from human behavior is problematic. Let's see an example. Here, human messages eventually converge to a short, stable message across the repetitions, and the salient words consistently appear throughout. GPT-4 also uses shorter messages under the explicit instruction, but the words vary a lot more and do not converge. This latter behavior would increase a human listener's cognitive effort and make misunderstandings more likely to happen. So, for MLLMs, achieving shorter messages does not mean achieving the real communication efficiency humans have. Noticing this, we pushed further on prompt engineering hoping to also get message convergence, but we found that only very explicit instruction can achieve this. We had to explicitly instruct the model to shorten the message by extracting salient tokens from previous messages and keep using the same message if it cannot be shortened further. These heavy-handed prompts won't generalize beyond reference games, so we conclude that today's MLLM cannot perform in-context adaptation to make their own language efficient. Next, I'll give a quick overview on how we also evaluate the models as listeners, using similar ideas. When creating variants of the listener experiments, we don't manipulate the instructions and instead change how the conversation history and images are presented. In the standard setup for listener evaluation, we show the images in every trial in shuffled order. You can see the images are shuffled here. We also have an interaction variant where the images are shown in every trial without shuffling then the comparison with the previous variant can show the impact of image shuffling on a model listener's performance. The two variants I just explained involve a growing number of images in the input as the game progresses. So we also have a variant where the images are presented only once in the beginning of the game, with all trials assuming the same image order. Comparing this variant with the previous one, we can understand how input complexity, especially the number of images, impact the models. Here are results for these variants. The standard listener and no shuffle variants require the model to take up to 96 images and only IDFix and GPT-4 can do so, so we only use them for these variants. In the standard setup, we see statistically significant performance gap between the models and humans. IDFix in particular shows severe performance degradation as the game goes on. If we compare the first two variants, we see that both models perform better when the images are not shuffled, showing that shuffling brings challenge to them. And when we compare no shuffle and images once, which only differ in the image quantity in the input, we see that increased image quantity particularly hurts IDFix.
The variants I just showed were designed to answer, can MLLM improve its understanding of a speaker who is adopting more efficient language over time? They show that the answer is yes, but for most models, the conversation history needs to be simple. We have more interaction variants to answer other research questions. For example, are there potential shortcuts for model listeners to show adaptation without actually grounding to the visual inputs? Other variants in our paper can answer this question, and they show how some shortcuts can be inappropriately exploited by a model, but more advanced models are better at avoiding these pitfalls. You can find out more on these variants and analyses in our paper. In summary, we propose ICA as an evaluation framework for any generic MLLM conversational agents. We showed that today's MLLMs cannot spontaneously adapt their own language to be more efficient through interactions, though when acting only as the listener and under certain interaction formats, they can perform better as the interaction progresses. This issue is fundamental because these models have no inherent motivation to communicate efficiently, unlike humans who are naturally motivated to reduce the efforts needed in communication. This issue is still surprising given that LLMs have successfully displayed many other human behaviors and impressive abilities in other applications by learning from large amounts of human data. And we know that this adaptation for efficiency is everywhere in humans' conversational corpora. Therefore, these models' pre-training or instruction tuning have failed to address these needs for conversational adaptation, and we hope that our evaluation framework can motivate and facilitate future research in this direction.